Many organizations still have applications that run on legacy versions of Windows Server. These versions are no longer supported and customers are looking into ways to migrate these applications onto a modern Windows Server without having to rewrite the application. One of the primary challenges faced is the lack of installation media and instructions to configure the app on a modern server version. Even if a reinstall was possible, some applications will fail to function due to application incompatibilities with the modern Windows Server. The Guided Reverse Packaging Tool, also known as GRP, is part of the AWS EMP program. The tool addresses the issues I've mentioned, and it can be used to create an EMP compatibility package of the application without installation media. This can then be deployed onto a modern Windows Server version. In this demo, I will use GRP to create a package of a legacy version of Apache Tomcat with Java running on Windows Server 2008. We will then deploy and test the package on a Windows Server 2022 instance. The process begins on the application server where the legacy application is installed. With the EMP tools installed, we launch the GRP tool from the shortcut found in the start menu or on the desktop. We then need to press the select folder button to choose a project folder as a working directory for the GRP tool. This is also the folder where the EMP package will be created. Once a folder is selected, the tool will move on to show the selected files tab. You then have access to other tabs and controls at the top of the window. We have buttons to change the selected project folder, start and stop the runtime analysis process, run the dependency discovery, and then create a package from the data we've selected. On the selected data tab, we can select any known files and folders that are part of the legacy application we want to package. In this case, Tomcat is installed on the D drive, so I will select the following directory. In this demo, we're assuming that the install location of Tomcat is all we know about the application. However, the more detail you can provide at this stage, the more in-depth the GRP discovery of the application will be. When the files and folders have been selected, the next step is to perform the runtime analysis. This process monitors running processes for files and registry accessed at runtime by the application. To do this, we click the second button at the top to start the analysis. At this stage, we need to run as much of the application as possible. This will capture any application dependencies that are triggered at runtime. Running an end-to-end -end workflow of the application will ensure all aspects of the application are captured in the packaging process. We launch the configure Tomcat shortcut to start and stop the service during runtime analysis, closing the configure Tomcat window, stopping the process and finishing by pressing the second button again to stop the analysis. The next step is to run the discovery process. The discovery button will show an orange warning to suggest this whenever the selected data or discovered data has been changed. After running the discovery, we can move to the Discover Data tab to review the files and folders added. We will see the approach used to discover the data in a column next to each item and a minus button to remove any unwanted items. Pressing the minus button will move the item to the excluded files and folders section at the bottom of the screen. We can press the plus button to add items back to the package if needed. Here we also see Java on the C drive detected using the similar creation date discovery method. This is one of many methods we use to automatically detect and suggest application dependencies during packaging. We can now move on to the next two tabs, the detected COM servers and services. The items in these tabs are based on related binary files under either the user or discovered data. The final tab is to review the registry. Here we can manually add any missing keys or remove any unwanted keys from the package. After making final changes to the package, we must rerun the discovery. This is signaled by the orange warning on the third button. Once complete, 
we can create our package using the fourth button. We give the package a name and then click the package app button to generate the EMP package. Once package creation is complete, we can click the button to open package. This will launch an explorer window showing the EMP package directory, which resides in the output folder selected at the start of this process. We can now zip up this directory and move it to our modern target operating system. We are now on a server 2022 instance where we've copied our EMP package. Like many legacy applications, Tomcat has a dependency on the host name of the machine it was installed on. And we're now on a server with a different host name. I'm going to make a simple change to one of the XML config files in the package. This enables one of the EMP's features, host name redirection. This uses the EMP compatibility engine to respond with an alternative value to any requests that Tomcat makes for the hostname. With the XML modified and saved, we can now deploy the package. We run compatibility package deployment exe with the arguments accept EULA to accept the licensing agreement, deploy or registry, which deploys the package registry to HK local machine hive rather than the user hive, and deploy DIR to specify the directory we want to deploy the package into. Now the package is deployed, I will find the configure Tomcat shortcut in the start menu, launch the application and start the Apache Tomcat service. With the service started, we can now browse to localhost on port 8080 and confirm that Tomcat is functioning on the server 2022 instance as expected.